have breaking news on January inflation. The consumer price index rising 0.5 percent, a half a percent month over month. That is right in line with estimates on the core level, rising four tenths of one percent. That too, right in line with what analysts had been estimating. Now, on a year over year basis, inflation actually rose more, 6.4 percent than analysts had anticipated. It's still a little bit of a deceleration from the prior month and core year over year rising 5.6%. So largely we are seeing these numbers come in line with estimates here. They do represent a reacceleration, right, from what we saw in December and this increase on the headline uh, is the most in three months time, that half a percent increase month over month. That core gain, by the way, four tenths of one percent is the average gain that we've seen over the past six months. So not really a change there. Uh, Not seeing the disinflation necessarily, right, guys, that the Federal Reserve has been looking for. But, you know, this is being seen by some economists as an anomaly, right, that we are going to see the pace of inflation start to slow more as 2023 goes on. Yeah, one area that I've been keeping a close eye on is transportation services and then more broadly within that, some of the mobility elements within a CPI report like this. The uh, month over month move that we saw, we actually saw some declines month over month in the index for used cars and trucks. That fell 1.9% during January. That continues this recent downward trend that we've been tracking. And then also airline fares as we've continued to have discussions with CEOs of Expedia, like you guys had yesterday, talking about what this demand profile is holding up like for travelers. It begs the larger question of where fares are continuing to move right now. The index for airline fares actually fell 2.1 percent over the month there. So some improvement on the price front, at least for consumers right now. Interesting to see the futures come back, really trying to uh, figure out what this means for the Federal Reserve. I'm locked in on egg prices. Egg prices, uh, something we've been tracking here for about a year and a half up eight and a half percent. So the gains, if you're looking for disinflation, that is probably the theme of the morning as it pertains to the CPI. You did see a little bit in egg prices, but still uh, items for everyday essentials, household goods remain very, very high. And we also saw that uh, in that earnings release this morning from Coca-Cola. I know they outlined uh, some uh, a slowing pace of inflation in their guidance for this year. I have a story on our homepage uh, now on that, but still the rate of increases are high on everyday staples, which ultimately raises the question, you know, what is the true state of the health of the consumer and how much money do they have left to spend right now? Money and uh, spending on staples, prices on staples are still high, but they are actually um, decelerating a little bit. I'm looking at food at home prices, which rose four tenths of one percent after a half a percent gain in December and a six tenths of a percent gain in November. They're still going up, Mm -hmm. to be clear. They're just going up by a smaller amount. A couple of other things that I want to mention about this CPI report. First of all, it it has now been rebalanced. The percentage that goes into the overall calculation that comes from owner's equivalent rent, which is sort of an estimate of rent that some economists do not like, but it's what the Fed uses. It is now about a quarter of the total calculation. The amount, the weighting of used car and new car prices is going down in this, by the way. And by the way, used car prices, fell 1.9% month over month. That's good news. They were expected to re-accelerate last month. So that's an interesting figure as well when we're talking about this rebalancing. One more thing to note about the rebalancing, the the BLS used to do this every two years, this rebalancing, this re-weighting. Now they're doing it every year. So this is something you can look for every January. Yeah, just lastly here, one of the other core discretionary categories and discretionary but necessity apparel here. Uh, I've been keeping close tabs on that because I think even as we look across some of the purchasing trends in footwear and apparel, um, consumers right now, they're continuing to see some of those prices increase slightly in apparel. Look like it was up by about eight tenths of a percent in this most recent month here. So whether you're spending up to get those new Jordans or (laughs) just trying to get uh, a basic white tee to make sure that you can get that overshirt on, whatever your fashion preferences look like, uh, paying just a little bit more there still. If you are, yes, if you are setting up your trading day, I think the early read is this. We're seeing futures really, I think, accelerate a little bit off of these numbers. Yes, signs of disinflation uh, feeding into that Jerome Powell narrative. We heard from him at that last Fed meeting, but also to your point, Julie, Prices still remain elevated, which, again, should raise the question, does the Fed uh, ultimately pivot? Wildly unclear, but still uh, interesting CPI numbers. 